Today I have seven new features we need to talk about and we are starting right now. What is up everyone, Ronnie here. Let's discover what's new in Canva this week. This is What's Hot episode 17 and I have a bunch of new stuff to talk about. The first new feature has to do with presentation. So here in front of me, I have a blank presentation document and we are on the templates tab right here. So you can see this is templates. And the new thing is this tab right here that says layout. Okay, so you will have next to your templates. So these are the regular templates. You will have another tab that says layout. So let's explore this tab. So we can see right here that Canva has created a bunch of different layouts that we can use in our presentation. For example, if I click on this one, I have a large uh, frame right here, or even a grid, a title and a subtitle for my, I don't know, like for title slide in my presentation. So obviously I can drop a photo in this frame. Let me find a photo to illustrate that. Um, let's just grab something random. Oh, I can even put a video right there. So there we go. I can change the color of my title right here. So this is one of the layouts. If I come back to the templates tab, back to the layouts here, I'm gonna delete this page one. You can see, you can scroll down and explore a large quantity of different layouts. So this is pretty cool because this will really speed up your uh, presentation creation. So you have layouts for all sorts of things. And I love that Canva has these little tags right here that allow you to browse through the layouts and find really what you, what you need. So you, I'm not gonna read all the tags, but you have tags for columns, for example. Like it's very common that you have to create different columns for your slides. So there you go, you just click on the column tab and you will see a, a good, I would say 15 or so layouts using different types of column. And you have like two columns, three columns, four columns, five columns right here. Uh, so this is pretty useful. If you click on it, these are ready to go. Now, something else that I think is really cool about these layouts is this little button right here. This color palette that you see, or this like, kind of like artist palette. When you click on this, you will have two buttons. The first one is auto, okay? So by default, it will be on auto. But the second one that says brand will allow pro users to use their brand kit or one of their brand kits so that all of these layouts will automatically be using your brand kit color and your brand kit fonts. So let me um, illustrate that with uh, one of the brand kit or some of the brand kits that we have here. So I am in one of my pro accounts and I have a couple of different brand kits. So if I click on the little arrow, you can see I have three different brand kits. One for my personal brand, Learn With Runny, and Fairtrade Connection, my nonprofit. So let's just say I'm using my personal brand. And so you will see my primary and neutral colors. And yeah, pretty much if I apply this, you will see that all of the layouts now carry this color. And not only the color, but you will see it also carries my branded font. So. If I click on this text box, I can see that it is now prompt black. So one of the benefits of using the layouts combined with your brand kit is that all of these slides, and I can delete the search right here, so I can see all the different layouts. So basically they will carry my brand colors and my brand fonts. Let me show you with a different brand kit. So if I change this brand kit, okay, by clicking on the little palette here again, to another one, let's say Fair Trade Connection, my nonprofit, and create a new slide. I will delete the colored background. Now you see immediately that these layouts carry my nonprofit color. And also, not just the color, but also the font. You now see Railway Heavy instead of the prompt black that I have for my personal brand, for my nonprofit, our custom font or our branded font is Railway Heavy. So there you go, layouts, you can explore them. There are a good 
I would say close to a hundred different layouts. Now, some of you may not have this feature yet, but don't worry, no need to uh, rush in the comments to let me know you don't have this already because it will probably come in the coming weeks in your Canva account. So just be patient and yeah, once it's there, experiment with it, have fun with it and create beautiful presentations with it. Now moving on to the second new feature. The second new feature I want to talk about is something that has been requested on the channel. It's a new video transition. So this will be useful for all your video editing projects in Canva. And this new transition is called Match and Move. Okay, so let me show you. I have a video project right here. You can recognize this is a video project because you see the timeline right here at the bottom of my page. So I have already created three simple pages. Okay, so this is what it looks like. So there's no video per se, but we have this animated sticker of the woman doing this, clapping her fingers. So the match and move transition is to be found right here. So transitions uh, are always going to be between your different pages of your project. So if I click here and if I click on transition, I will see there is a new transition, which is called match and move, which is still in beta, which is the fifth transition right here after dissolve slide, circular wipe, line wipe, and now match and move. And Canva is telling us match and move animates identical elements smoothly between pages. So what I've done, I have added the match and move right here between page one and page two. And I also added the same transition between page two and page three. So what I want to show you is how this renders. So let's play the entire project. All right, so what we can see is that this animated sticker is moving, but with a smooth motion, almost like there was a keyframe that would make the element move from one location on my page to the next one, okay? So, and this creates this pretty cool result of my animated GIF moving from one place to another, but not in an abrupt manner, but in a smooth manner. So this is match and move. It will work wonderfully with text, with animated stickers. All you have to remember is that it will move identical elements smoothly. All right, so if you have text boxes, if you have stickers and you're using the same sticker, this transition will do uh, its job of moving that element from one place to another in a smooth transition, just like if you had a keyframe or two keyframes and moving from one to the other. So try it out. This will be available to all users, pro and free, but you will need to use a video project or video document type in order to find this feature. And since we are talking about video project, the third new feature I want to talk about also has to do with video. And this is the possibility to now search and use sound effects. So sound effects now complement the audio library in Canva. So on top of searching for audio tracks like songs, you can also now search for sound effects. So let me show you, this is the same project. I have my blank video project right here. So the first thing you need to do is to find uh, the, the audio tab right here in the object panel. If you don't see the audio tab like me right here, I don't see it. Click on the three little dots that say more and go to your audio tab. Once you click here, it will be pinned to your object panel right here. And yeah, so you can search for pretty much any keyword, just like for song, but you can now filter the results for sound effects. So for example, let's say water, I'm searching for some water related sound effects. I use the little slider right here. So now I can only search for effects. Okay, so I could search for vocals, instrumentals or effect. Let's click on effect and apply the filter. And now you see all of these clips right here are sound effects related to the keyword water that I can use in my video project. So this is super useful. You can preview them by clicking here. Water drips, sounds like someone peeing, but uh, this is a water drip splash bathtub. Yep. So this is pretty cool. If you click on it, if you double click on it, it will be added to your video timeline. 
So there you go. And uh, let's assume I had a bunch of video clips already here on my timeline. I could move this around to anywhere where they are necessary. So the audio library is mostly available for pro users. There are very limited options for free users using the audio library because this is a library that comes from Epidemic Sound that partners with Canva for all of the audio tracks and now for the sound effects. So free users will have a very limited amount of choice right here. So let's try to see. You have an option to filter for the free stuff only. If I apply the effect for water, there is absolutely no sound effect for free. Now, if I get rid of the free, I have a bunch of different options right here. So just bear that in mind that if you are a free user, you might not have a lot of choice for your sound effects. But what I really love here is that Canva is really making one more step, in my opinion, in the right direction in terms of becoming a solid video editing solution because sound effects are a must. Like you need sound effects if you want to create cool tutorials, cool videos. And now they are all there available in the audio library. So yeah, I believe this is an absolute right move from Canva, giving video creators more options and more flexibility to really express their creativity. So try them out. And if you're not yet Canva Pro, but would like to try it, I will have a link for you. This is a link to our affiliate link. You can try Canva Pro for free for 45 days. So that's 15 days extra than what you would find on the Canva website because we are both Diana and I Canva expert, we benefit to this extra period for the free trial. So go ahead and check out this link if you're interested in starting to edit videos like a pro with Canva Pro. All right, moving on to the fourth new feature. All right, guys, continuing our journey to discover what's hot in Canva this week. We are now to new feature number four. And this one is something relatively low key. Okay, so not every new feature needs to be flamboyant. This one has to do with a new menu in the object panel for lines and shape. Because this is a new interface update, I would say a change in the interface, a, a change in the way things are presented in Canva. I think I wanted to show it to you because you might be wondering, oh, this is new. Well, I want you to know everything that's new. That's the point of this series. So let's talk about this. So when you click on the elements tab, uh, you will find this new section right here that says line and shape. Okay, so let's click on see all and discover this new menu. So basically it is a redesign of or everything that has to do with lines and everything that has to do with shapes. They are now under the same menu, which kind of makes sense because like, it is basic elements for anyone who wants to design. So if you scroll down, you will see all of your shapes and you will see all of your lines. So nothing else apart from the way they are presented is new. Once they're here, you can uh, access the different features for lines right here. And it is similar to shapes as well. So if I click on this square right here, uh, I will see straight from the get go that the color that Canva will present this shape is going to be my branded color. So if I come back to this color right here, you will see my brand kit and my first color in my brand kit is this one color. If I change this, let's say if I change it to this brand kit and I delete this and now import a new square like this one, you will see that it will by default carry the first color of my brand kit, okay? I don't know if this works for free users, maybe because free users still have access to three colors in their color palette. But so that is the first thing I noticed. Let's go back to elements and let's go back to uh, this section right here. The second thing I see is that I can add text directly into my shape. So let's just type uh, Ronnie right here. And obviously I have access to my font options right here. I can bump this to let's say 75 and I can change the color of my font as well. So let's make this white. So I see that these are already some new features, kind of like making my life easier. I can have my text into my, my shape without much effort. It's already centered and everything. I can change that shape. Let's see if uh, my text will remain in it, but I can change my shape by clicking on the shape button. 
Uh, let's try this one. Yeah, my text remains right there. So this is pretty cool, to be honest. Uh, I like that Canva is giving us more options right here. All right, so let's continue to explore what's new in this top navigation bar for my shapes and lines, okay? So we have already discussed the fact that you can change your shape. Now let's click on this other button right here, which is the outline. So we can see that by default, you would have no borders, no outline, but you can click on different types of outlines and you see now around my circle, around my shape, I will have these different types of borders. And I can play around with uh, the border weight, like so, which is pretty cool. The corner rounding, what is the corner rounding? Oh yeah, I probably need like a shape with corners, yes. So now if I play around with the corner roundings, you see, I can make the corners more or less straight or rounded with this other slider right here. And I can still add a border and the border will obviously adapt to my corner rounding options. So this is pretty cool. I can make this bigger. Let's make this one single line. So this is a neat little option that gives us a bunch of shortcuts to create better shapes and better lines. Okay, so again, to find this, simply head over your elements tab and then find this section right here that says line and shape. Click on see all and there you go. You will be able to access all of your shapes from here. Now moving on to new feature number five already. New feature number five is also something relatively subtle, but I would like to let you know what it is. It is also a new menu, and that is a shortcut to have access to the controls of any element you add to your page. So for that, you can work with graphics, you can work with photos, also videos, I think that will work. So let's just import a video into our page and you will see that this new menu is this thing right here that you will see on top of your element when it is selected. Okay, it's not selected, you won't see this, but if you select your element, you will see this menu right here with two shortcuts and a more button. So the shortcuts are duplicate and delete and the more button will give you more options copy, paste, delete, animate, comment, or set video as background. So basically what this pop-up menu does is to show you everything that is behind the right click. So if I right click on this image with my mouse, I will have the same menu right here, okay? So basically Canva is giving us this shortcut. I am not sure this will stick around. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. Maybe this is an experiment that I'm seeing in my Canva account. Let me know if you see this in your Canva account and let me know in the comment section if you like this, if you like this shortcut or if it's annoying, let me know. No, me, I don't have much of an opinion about it. I think every new shortcut is pretty much good to have because it allows different users to work in different manners. And I think it's just a question of adapting to these new changes, but let me know what you think of it. Moving on to the sixth new feature. This one has to do with a new shortcut again, but this time from the Canva homepage. So if you are on your Canva homepage, this is my Canva homepage, you will see under tools a new tab right here that says discover apps. Okay, so let's click on that and see what this is all about. Discover apps is pretty much a shortcut from which you will be able to access all the different apps that can connect with Canva, okay? So typically these apps will be found under the more button from within the editor. Let me show you, if I come back to the editor, click on more, this is where you will find all of the apps. But I guess with this shortcut, with the discover apps, Canva wants to make and give more prime real estate to these apps. I guess Canva is building a contributor ecosystem of external developer, maybe creating all sorts of different apps that will be able to connect to the Canva platform. So I think it's good that there is another place, kind of like a window of every app that is out there available for people to search and browse and read about. You'll have different tabs. So the For You tab will be a selection of apps that Canva believes might be of interest to you. So for me, I have the color mix, I have screen, duotone, shadows, frames. So these are apps that I use all the time, to be honest. 
But uh, what I like about this is that I can discover new things. For example, loud dock right here. I've never used that app. So if I click on it, I have a little bit of explanation about what this app does and I can start using it and I can start discovering new things into Canva, these new apps. And they are all free. They are all for everybody to use. So pro and free users. And I believe there will be some changes in this space as Canva opens up its ecosystem for independent developers to create new extensions, new apps. And these apps, some of them are really cool. This is where the background remover comes from. This is where the duotone comes from. Like they were people that were either hired by Canva to develop these apps or independent creators and uh, coders who came up with these apps and then submitted them to the Canva ecosystem and were approved and now are part of the product. So I believe this is a uh, very good that this ecosystem is opening up and that we have now this section to discover the apps it's kind of like building an app store within Canva and you can discover them, you can search for them. So if I search for color, for example, I will see every app with the word color in it. Maybe I can find some frames. Yeah. So the search feature is still a little basic in my opinion. It doesn't show you categories of apps, but you have these tabs. You have your apps that allow you to import media, to fetch media from other places. So these are your import media apps from this tab right here. So you will see stuff like uh, Box, uh, you have your Embed, Flourish, Flickr, Instagram, um, yeah, and a bunch of other apps that, to be honest, I have never tried. So that's the first one, import media. You can also discover content. So instead of importing media you might have on another account, you can discover some new content with this tab right here. So we have 3D Bay, Bitmoji, Emoji, Giphy, Google Maps, etc., etc. Then you have your photo editing apps. Okay, so here you'll find your Duotone, Color Mix, Auto Enhance, Bat TV, the background remover, Shadows, etc., etc., Smart Mockups. So these are very popular apps that you should probably know by now. And then you have Share and Publish. So these will allow you to share your design into different platforms. So you can share on Slack, on Twitter, on Facebook, on smart mockups, on LinkedIn, etc., etc., on, on MailChimp, uh, plus a plethora of different apps that I don't know here, like Social Pika. I have never heard of this app. But maybe one day we should create a series of tutorials where we kind of explore all of these apps. We create accounts and we show you what they do and what they don't do. And if we like them, maybe we could rank them. Let me know if this is some content that you will be interested about to learn about all of these apps and let you know what I think of them. So this is the Discover Apps tabs. It is to be found right here on the homepage under the Tools section. And talking about apps, there is one app in particular that I have seen popping up in Canva. This is the last new feature I would like to talk about and it is called 3D Bay. So let me show you where to find this app. I am here on a presentation document, but it doesn't really matter what kind of document you're using. So like I said before, the apps will be located under the More tab. So make sure you click on More right here and the 3D Bay app will be stored under the Discover Content From section. Okay, so the first section right here. You will see it just says 3D. So if you click on this for the first time, this is what it says, free 3D images accessible on Canva. 3D Bay is an extensive online collection offering high quality royalty free 3D images. So you can get access to all of these etc etc. So in order to connect this app to your Canva account just have to click on the use button if it's the first time. And then once you do that you will see this. You will have your categories. You can click on see more and you will have access to a bunch of different categories of 3D objects Let's just find one, for example, social media. Media and social media, if I click here, Canva will load all of the 3D illustrations right here. You can see some pretty cool stuff. So I'm gonna open a couple of them right here. For example, this one, this one, and this one right here. So yeah, they look pretty good in my opinion. Uh, and these are royalty free, so you can use that on your website, on your presentation anywhere you want really. So let's get rid of these two uh, and 
try to compose something very quick with this one. And what I love about these uh, graphics is that you can select them and apply another effect on top of that. So if I want to change the colors of these copper right here, you see there's no color button, but I could achieve this result with the duotone effect, for example. So if I click on duotone, let's select uh, this duotone effect, for example. And if you even want to customize this further, you can play around with the two colors, but I'm fine with this. So I'm just gonna apply this. Canva is gonna work its thing here. And there seemed to be a little glitch in the background, but no, yeah, it's actually disappearing after a couple of seconds. And now I have this 3D illustration with my duotone effect applied to it. I can create a nice title here for, let's say an app that's called Socially. So I do this can make this way bigger, prompt bold. Let's give this 200 and there you go. Now you have your homepage, looks great. I can change the color of uh, this text, use my color picker and find a color in this illustration, for example, and there you go. You have a very cool on-brand homepage for a presentation or for your little website or anything. So if I come back to my 3D Bay right here, because that's what we are talking about, uh, you can see that you can search from two different ways. You can search by categories, which is what we have been doing before. So you have all your categories, you click on show more and you see all of the categories. Or if you go back, you can also search for collections. Okay, so you have plants, home decor, object furniture, appliances, etc, etc, NFT and crypto, building startup, podcasts, podcasts might be interesting. So there you go. You have like your categories, your collections, you can search, they are royalty free so everybody can use them. And that's it for this episode of What's Hot with Canva. Thank you very much for watching. I will leave you a link right here to the rest of this series, this playlist, What's Hot with Canva. This was episode 17 already, meaning there's a bunch of other episodes right there. Thank you for watching until the end. I appreciate you. Let me know in the comments which one was your favorite. And I will see you in the next video.